sister, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, and I'm a grandmother. So naturally, when I go into different places, I pay attention to the role of women. I was trying all the time to feel free. That was something I was trying to pursue since I was very small. Like for me, it's like the more is going on in my life, the more energy I have. <laughs> I always love to feel that sensation, I might say, of freedom. I think after school, I really didn't know what to do. And I took a lot of tests, and they all told me to study law, actually. I was very lucky. I need to say that I had the respect of all my teachers. <laughs> I know a lot of cases that they are not being uh, respected by their teachers because of being girls. And I have heard that, and I have seen that. I wasn't really aware of that topic. I wasn't really aware of that I'm a woman and that's an issue in architecture, right? So nobody was talking about it. In history, in real life architecture, what was going on around the world, the communication that I have, the image of women doing architecture were very small references, you know? Uno, dos, tres. Because you have no references. You have your teachers who tell you what is good and how you have to do it. Naturally, because they can only teach what they think, <laughs> how to do it. I'm still very patriarchal. I'm, uh, and I'm against it. I'm, I'm a fighter against that. I believe that society should be diverse, should recognize that diversity, that utterness. But in a way, I had lived a whole life in a structure, in a social structure, which is mainly determined by power. I think everybody has a certain image and knows what to expect from them. They have a kind of a bonus of uh, people trusting them. We want to pursue the male image because it is also the connection to the power, to the success, you know? It's like, we're, we're not clean. <laughs> we are guilty as well. Olé, olé. <laughs> are different, not only physically, but also in other ways. But there starts really slippery territory, I think. <laughs> might be. Yes, might be. I mean, I, I really believe that uh, we have different qualities and particularities. I really hope there will come a moment where we can openly talk about the differences without opening other categories, which at the moment is the problem, right? It's really the problem of making categories of people. And so as soon as we, um, yeah, maybe are beyond that, we can talk about the, the differences that we can bring to the table and to also complement each other. Oh, 
having the possibility to bear a child inside. That is a very powerful strength. I need to say, uh, I never ever thought I would like to have a kid. And when it happened, I think I was paralyzed for three days. Yeah, somehow, when I was pregnant, I was, of course, a little bit worried about how it all works, if I can still work as much as I used to. And strangely, it was the opposite was happening. So I feel it was always good for my work to have other things in my life, like my children. It's showing me a new opportunity to learn how he's discovering the world, the world that I'm trying to interpret and to work with. I said, I can manage this. And, and I think that's the problem, you know? That the conditions of the world, the capitalistic world where we live, the conditions of having uh, uh, hours to work or, or the requirements to be in a place, they're not flexible enough for women to feel maybe this confidence of doing things, of taking decisions, because they need to decide between one or the other. The time management is like a daily struggle, <laughs> I would say. All the childcare facilities close at 4 p.m. Right? There are rarely places where you can leave your kids longer. So if both parents are working, you really need to create your own uh, system of support. The public institutions, the healthcare institutions, the, the schooling, your job is 40 minutes away from that. So you need to move around the city at an hour, which is not your lunch time, to go for your kid, then take him where? Because in your office, there's not a space for your kid. So to leave him alone in the house or, or leave him in some place or with a grandma. So you're like translating the problem now to all generations of women. So that is the problem, the structure of the society we have now. <laughs> There is not only one way you can approach architecture. Traditionally, it's done to create borders, right? Because architecture is ordering things, right? It's like, okay, I'm doing a house, this is inside, and I create a border to the outside. Even inside the house, I dedicate certain rooms for certain activities and I make borders towards the other activities. But for me, good architecture really mitigates um, borders rather than creating borders between things. So it's really rather enhancing, encouraging relationship between things. It's more like a catalysator. It becomes a little bit more part of the facade rather than of the interior this way.
I believe that special dignity, the qualities of powerful, maybe voids, or maybe small holes, or maybe insignificant actions, do something. And there's where I believe architecture has this connection to what art does. And it's like they provoke, they have passion behind, they create emotions. I believe architecture should and must have emotions. So there's my voice. In my own office, I really try to establish a very horizontal you know, way of power. Not only for them, but also for myself. <laughs> because I think better architecture comes out of that, but also that I'm more relieved. I don't really want to take every decision and do everything. That's, that's horrible. But they have also no idea. No idea. I'm not a superhero, you know? I, I couldn't manage all what I do on my own. And I think you can't be a good architect uh, if you don't hear, observe, sense. And I'm fighting against myself, against my own ego, uh, to do that in my work. I wasn't very conscious about this discipline being men's profession at that time. I just felt very much attracted to the studies and disciplines. I was young and I did not know any better and rather fearless and very curious, interested in what's going on when you start to build high rise in Manhattan. So I volunteered. By complete accident, I was assigned to a construction site of a high-rise building in Manhattan. And then at that time, in late 70s, that was considered to be environment for men. And I would go in there with a hard hat every day and talk to everybody else. And they would say, accident happens. And you kind of knew what it meant. And you felt a little bit of danger. But as a young person, I thought that's the way it is on job site in any case. So I just took it as it came. And I realized that I just probably went through the worst circumstances of a construction site really early in my career. And after that, I just felt like I could face any circumstances. So. Architecture has been exploitive and exclusive and then discriminating. And in, in a way, it just breaks my heart that this is happening right now and we have to constantly fight and we have to constantly speak up. And it's just not true for architecture, it's true in the world of sciences and it's very true in the world of engineering in world of business. Great to see you. Welcome. 
Welcome to your building. Yeah. <laughs> I think the danger of architecture is disengagement and isolation from reality. And if you actually have very healthy curiosity, you're constantly engaging with people, the places, society, and also you can understand the changes that's occurring. And we have to be able to transmit that knowledge to the next generation for the survival of discipline and also give back to the society, which gave us opportunity of a gift for us to be able to build. I've always been curious as a child, and I have a tendency to ask a lot of questions because I want to know more and I really want to learn more and especially new things about people, the places and how things work, what is it for, why. And those are the big questions that especially little kids ask. My granddaughter is constantly asking, why, why, why? And I have to answer those questions. I said, that's like a really way to engage with the world. This voracious uh, interest and curiosity is quite an important engine for intellectual activities of architects. The class which is entering to Harvard next year, 70% is women. So that means young women are thinking of architecture seriously as a career. I think it's important not to be afraid and also not to care about what society tells you how to live or what to do. Why don't you try and go to the interview? You, you just need to present your project. What can you lose? You don't lose anything. And now society really looks at us. And we have ruined the planet because we've been selfish of just trying to solve our necessities. Now we need to solve those problems. And young people today, the world needs them. The world needs them to change to a better place.